been on the game since the vote she was living with left her with a kid, but I've never known her to be drunk and disorderly before. Eric, she was sitting on the curb screaming abuse at the world in general. And she's full, mate. There's no doubt about that. We had a hell of a job getting her into the car. Yeah, fair enough. Well, she's drunk and disorderly, all right? Well, look after her, will you, huh? Yeah. Charlene, come over here, will you, love? Come on. Yeah. Steady now. Come on on. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? They're bastards. Now, now, that's enough of that. Well, I are. Who are you talking about? George and Benjamin? No. Who then? They're all bastards. What? Every one of them. Oh, now, 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 come on, love. Come on. <laughs> come on, Charlene. Oh, Strip, look, take it to the end of your room, see what you can get out of the way. You come, go with it, mate. Come on. This way, Charlene. Come on. Through here. Uh, we'll look after you now. Come on. Hey. Here we are. Charlene, how are we going to help you if you're not going to tell us what it's all about? <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> yes, that much we know. We would like to know the rest of it. <laughs> It's a kid. Young Ricky. What happened to him? I don't mind him calling me names. That goes with the job. I'll get paid for that. But he's got nothing to do with the way I live, eh? Anything I've got to do, that's not his fault, eh? No, it's not his fault. He only told me today. And he only told me then because I made him. I caught him crying. The whore's son, they called him. Bastard, they said. Well, I know who the bastards are. Come on. Oh, stuff things proper now, eh? <laughs> you know, when he told me, I was going to give the game away. Move on somewhere and scrub floors if I had to. Any job that wouldn't get him called names. But if I, if I get lumbered for drunk and disorderly, no one will ever give me a job. Not even as a floor scrubber. Oh, I'll stop to that real proper. <laughs> what about I get you a nice cup of tea, eh? <laughs> Bet she hasn't eaten for days. I've got a sandwich left out there, Danny. Thanks, Roy. I'll put the kettle on. <laughs> Might as well give it away. Yep. Ten minutes after we do, the place will get knocked over. I don't think so. It's beginning to look like the ten bucks I invested on this information is going down the drain. Ten bucks? Oh, Jeffrey, you've been looking for bargains again. Who was it? Grimshaw. Reg Grimshaw. <laughs> if I find out that old bludger's taken me, I'll wring his bloody neck. Ten bucks is worth having a heart attack on. Who's doing that? You are, you are. Look at you. You're all worked up. I am not worked up. All right, all right. Dog, give it away. No, 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 no. Half an hour. Giorgio. Here's Eric. Yeah, but he's Jeff's fish, mate. Well, does he know that Jeff's not here? Okay, send him up. Reg Grimshaw. He's got some information for us. He's suddenly become a mine of information again, hasn't he? <laughs> Doesn't seem to mind who he sells it to, either. Yeah, well, he's fallen on pretty hard times, they tell me. So I suppose your cash is as good as Jeff's? Well, he won't be getting a lot out of me, mate, I can tell you. <laughs> Come in, Reg. Come in. Sit down, sit down. G'day. 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 Well, now, Reg, you're taking a bit of a chance coming in here, aren't you? Oh, pretty safe this hour of the morning. 
no one about to spot me. You can't sleep nights, Reg. <laughs> Something like that, I suppose. But then, that's how I get all my information. Always moving about, ear to the ground. And what is this information that you got for us, Reg? Ah, well, uh, look, uh, I don't like to bring up the subject, but uh, there's a little matter of... Um, you know, when I tell Mr Johnson things, he sees me right. Well, I'll tell you what, Reg. If your information's any good, we'll come to some sort of an arrangement. Hmm? I've got a big one for you. Have you? And where did you hear this big one? Jewelers store job. That posh place up on Riverside Heights. It's going to get knocked off. When? Tomorrow night. Who? Oh. <laughs> well, I don't want to embarrass you, but I, I want to see the colour of your money first, Mr Giorgio. All right, Reg. Now then, who is going to do the job? Uh, the going rate with Mr Johnson is ten, Mr Giorgio. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, the job's not till tomorrow night. You can wait until then and do business with him, then. Ah, uh, OK. Because uh, you're a good bloke. Because I, I know you. I'll let you have it for five. Who, then? Bill Hardy. Bill Hardy, eh? Yeah. Not your day, is it, Reg? That wasn't even a good try, mate. Bill Hardy's still got two months to serve for the last job we put him away for. Your information isn't all that crash hot, is it, Reg? Right, oh, Reg. I think we'd better have a talk about this tip you gave Detective Senior Sergeant Johnson. You remember about the warehouse that's going to be knocked off tonight? Is that why you were prepared to take the five off me, Reg? Because you didn't want to cross paths with Detective Senior Sergeant Johnson for the next few days? Hmm? Three two four. Message from Senior Detective Georgia for Detective Senior Sergeant Johnson. Let's have it. Have established information you've been given on warehouse break and enter is incorrect. Message ends. Well, I'm Grimshaw's bloody guts. Message received. <laughs> Sit down over there. I'll deal with you in a minute. Can I have a word with you? What's wrong? It's about Charlene. Do we have to charge her? Well, Mike said she was committing an offence and we've got to go through with it. I know that, Sarge, but she was an emotional state when it's happened. It's taken me this long to try and straighten her out. What are you talking about? She was drunk. She'd been drinking, but that's not the root of a problem. What was the matter with her? It's about a little boy. People are starting to call him nasty names. Well, that's hardly our fault, is it? No, it's not. But in her frame of mind, and with a little bit of encouragement, we may well get her off the game. She may try and start a new life for herself. Look, do you think she'd ever do that? I don't know. But if we don't give her encouragement and try and get her off the game, Sarge, I don't know who else will. Well, I reckon we should give her a break. We know what your opinion, I'll ask for it. All right. Yes, Mike? Grimshaw, yes, yes, yes. yes. Where's he gone? I told you to keep an eye on him, Phillips. He was here a minute ago, mate. He must have shot through. Do you want me to send Phillips after him? Hang on, hang on. Yeah, 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 JJ, I know where to pick him up if he wants him. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Look, look, mate, while you're there, could you pop down for a second? <laughs> We'd like to talk to you about Charlene. Thanks, mate, right. Yes, he's coming down now. Look, if he's prepared to drop the charges, I'll go along with it. Oh, thanks, Sarge. Hey, if he agrees, that means we've still got our clean sheet, not one offence recorded. Yeah, and what a headquarters going to make of that? I think we've been slacking and they'll cut down on staff. I'll be delighted. Think of the great public relations exercise it'll be. Crime under control, headlines like that. Hey, we might get a picture in the paper. And you know, it's all reflection on the officer in charge. They're going to take notice of you now, Sarge. <laughs> That'll be the problem, day. Mary. Mike, it's about Charlene. Can we let her off the hook with a bit of a talking to? Oh, I've been giving you a big sob story, has she? It's not that. It's just that she's so far down and if we don't help her out, I don't know what'll happen to her, Mike. Are you sure she's not just conning you? I'm sure. Have you heard the evidence, Eric? Yeah, look, look, I think a, a lecture might be the best bet, Mike. Well, if she's tugged the strings of your hard old heart, Eric, I reckon there must be something to a story. All right, but you deliver the lecture, OK? Thank you. And you've still had no offences up there all night, mate? Not a thing, mate. It's a real naughty night. <laughs> Get in there! Oh, but Mr Johnson! Up the stairs, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Spotted him slinking down the street. You better get your pen ready, Eric. 
When Jeffrey's finished with Mr. Grimshaw and his phony tip-off, it'll be an hour right in the charges. <laughs> Ten bucks. Another 20 minutes, and we would have made it. But I had to do something. I'm broke. Never had a cent for a feed, a, a bed, nothing. I don't care if you're so broke, you rattle. It's the last time you're gonna peddle phony information to me. <laughs> Shut up! It was only ten bucks. Well, it's gonna be the most expensive ten bucks you ever laid your hands on. Jeff, what? <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? Throw the bloody book at him. Oh, look, couldn't you do it off with a caution? What? Well, look, look, it's only minutes to go before the end of the shift, and we've got a clean sheet up to now. The hell's that got to do with the price of anything? Well, I just thought it was, it was rather good, you know, not having any reported crime right throughout the shift, and the PR boys could make something of that, I'm sure, and we look good in the eyes of the top brass. Morning, all. Morning. Tough night? The bastard of a night! Oh! Quick buzz off before he changes his mind. That's not bad, mate. Damn near a miracle, if you ask me. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, bye, Reg. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. George. Thank you. And thank you, too. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Mr. O'Reilly. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's all right. Behave yourself, Charlie. I will. You good go. men, all of you. Good people. Oh, you too, Sergeant Rogers. What was that all about? I'm off, Mike. You coming? Yeah, mate. See you later, folks. Yeah, no, no, mate. Right. I might have given her the flu. That's nothing to what she might have given you, mate. Are you feeling any better? Oh, a good night's sleep seems to have fixed it. Good. And thanks for changing shifts. No worries. What sort of a night did you have? Great. Look at this. A clean sheet. First time ever. I don't <laughs> believe it. Oh, there's one for you. No, nah, no, 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 no. We're off duty. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, yeah, what's the time I was in here, Roy? You coming? Yeah, on the way, Sam. Right. Danny! Come in. Come on, Roy, show you in. Yep, righty up. Riverside Police. See you all later. Just hang on a minute. Bye. Constable Baker, it's for you. Oh, who is it? It's your wife. It sounds pretty urgent. Oh, thank you. Hello, Melissa. Oh, Roy, are you going to be long? No, I'm just off now. Oh, it's Sean. There's something wrong. Oh, I waited and waited in case you were busy, but oh, he's getting worse, Roy. You can hardly breathe. Oh, can you come home quickly, please? I'm on my way, Melissa. This Saturday night, don't miss the hilarious Western comedy Blazing Saddles. Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks are just two of the stars in this riotous Western send-up. It's the movie that gave Beans a bad name. Blazing Saddles, it's violently funny. And it's a whole lot of fun. Saturday night at 8.30 on NBN, right after different strokes. Next, the premiere of Murder is Easy.